You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Another day has brought another defection from the LSU football team. If you have not yet heard, linebacker Bug Strong has entered the transfer portal. Uh, Bug Strong, we barely knew thee. So Bug Strong, um, the number one JUCO linebacker in the country. He arrived at LSU in January. He was thought to be a guy that would help Solidify the middle of that defense where they were so uh, bad a year ago at inside backer. And I do fully understand that, look, a big part of the reason that um, you know that, that Bug Strong has not been able to, to get on the field and play more is simply the fact that, man, Damone Clark is playing like an All-American. So Damone Clark's playing great. Baskerville solidified a starting spot, although he got hurt this past weekend. But the other part of it, too, is, man, your defense is really bad, and that guy can't find a way to get on the field. And I guess it's somewhat of a cautionary tale of buying the JUCO hype, uh, because Buck Strong was the number one JUCO linebacker in the country. And LSU needed inside linebacker help, and so they signed the number one JUCO linebacker in the country. And you would think that that's a guy that was going to be able to come make an immediate impact and it just hasn't really worked out that way for Bug Strong. Um, he has played in all eight games for LSU, but just 17 total tackles, one and a half for loss. He does have a sack and a pass breakup. His season high of tackles uh, came against Central Michigan. The sack that he had was all the way back in the opener against UCLA. It just it just hasn't materialized for Bug Strong this season at LSU and. Maybe for him, we might be able to look at it and say, golly, had you stuck it out, there would have been a very real opportunity at LSU for you next year because of that linebacker room and what it's going to look like. But we'll delve into that in a second. I want to take you back, man, just again, to kind of illustrate how tricky it can be when you dip into the JUCO ranks. This was Ed Ogeron in fall camp. Remember, Buck Strong was here during spring. LSU was short on numbers. Remember, Mike Jones was not able to participate yet in spring. So LSU was short on numbers. Buck Strong went through spring. And then in fall camp, this is what Ogeron said about Buck Strong. He's all over the field. Buck Strong had a big hit the other day. Like, light somebody up. He is coming in great condition. <sighs> when optimism abounds and all is well and everybody's going to be an All-American and not really. Uh, eight games in, now he's transferring. I mean, that was Ogeron preseason. Middle of the season, this is what Ed Ogeron had to say when he was asked about Buck Strong. Buck Strong's a hard hitter. He comes from junior college. He's learning our defense. Uh, he made a couple of mistakes in the first game that were very costly, especially with some crossing rounds, but he learned from it. He improved on it. I would say the most costly mistake, of course, was the back-breaking touchdown that UCLA made. On those crossing routes where Buck Strong was a little out of position, didn't make the play, but uh, we'll see what is next for Buck Strong. And man, you would think that this would be an opportunity for LSU to sell a guy on the value and coming back and getting better because you could look at Damone Clark. Because that was Damone Clark a year ago. A guy that was athletic, could defend sideline to sideline, wasn't super instinctive between the tackles, really struggled at times with Bo Pliny's defense, although everybody did a year ago. Um, and he's come back and turned himself into a potential All-American. And you know, Mel Kuyper right now is Damone Clark listed as his fifth best linebacker in this year's draft. Incredible transformation. But Buck Strong won't finish his career at LSU. Um, and man, when you look at what the linebackers are going to be like next year, we'll see what... I, you're losing Damone Clark for certain. And Micah Baskerville is a senior as well. Mike Jones is going to be interesting. Does he come back? He's officially listed as a sophomore. But does he come back and play another year and try to elevate, or does he go somewhere else or go pro? And then it's a bunch of guys that haven't played. It's Greg Penn and Antoine, Sam Antoine Sampa and Philip Webb and Josh White. I mean, that's your linebacker room next year. So whoever the next coach is has a massive task to rebuild that room and very likely dipping into the transfer portal, but preferably not the JUCO ranks, the major college football ranks. If Alabama was able to go get Henry Toto from Tennessee – I get it, it's Alabama. 
maybe whoever the next coach is can bring a guy along with him as well who can help at linebacker. Um, but I mentioned a JUCO is really tough. And every now and again, every now and again, you dip into the JUCO ranks and you get a Damian Lewis, a guy who just, it just clicks. He's a day one starter. He starts for two years. He's an NFL draft pick and a day one starter in the NFL. That was Damian Lewis. He was awesome in his two years in Baton Rouge. More often than not, though, your JUCO transfers are TK McClendon. They're Trevez Moore. They're Badara Traora. They're Javante DeMond. They're Quantavius Leslie. They're Philip Lodeholt. Did some research today, Muse. <laughs> Muse is like, what the hell are you talking to? You remember Quantavius Leslie? Boy. I remember him. I don't remember Philip. Philip Lolo was an offensive lineman. I believe he ended up finishing up at Oklahoma. But um, Quantavius Leslie, man, he was the size of a toothpick. And boy, were we fired up when they signed Quantavius Leslie because he could fly and he was going to blow the top off the defense and he was going to be this amazing game breaker. And I'd be, did he have a catch in his I don't even think. That's, that is the cautionary tale with Juco. There are way more Philip Lodeholt, Quantavius Leslie, Badara, Badara Traora. He was the number one Juco tackle in America. He was going to be the anchor on that line. You saw him the first practice in spring, and Ryan Baker was dusting him around left end, and you're like, oh, that kid can't play in the SEC. Yeah, this is not going to go well. That's the cautionary tale. Um, but it goes a step further. Uh, last week, Coy Moore transferred out. This week, Bug Strong has entered the transfer portal. You know about all of the injuries. Well, Ed Ogeron was on the coach's teleconference today, and they kind of asked the question about, you know, with injuries and stuff, do you know when to ramp up practice, when to pull back on him? And he, in his answer, sort of divulged something that's gotten a lot of people's attention today. We have a formula here that's been very successful, and I try to stick to that formula, but it does change and vary according to each team. It does change and vary according to the injuries that you may have or you don't have. For example, this week, we'd usually go full pass today, and then tomorrow we'd have the Tiger scrimmage, uh, Tiger Bowl. But we don't have enough players to do the Tiger Bowl scrimmage tomorrow, and we don't have enough players healthy enough to have a full practice today. So you have to make adjustments. You don't have enough players have a full practice. Y'all, I don't want to just pile on. I mean, Ogeron's done. He's been fired. He's a lame duck coach. It's coming to an end, and hopefully whoever's next is far more competent. But you do realize that in college football, you're, this isn't the NFL where you've got like a 53-man roster, right? You have, an, you have an, a scholarship limit of 85 and then you can have 20 walk-ons for a total of 105 players. 105. How in the hell do you not have enough players to have a practice? It's in COVID where half your roster is wiped out because of contract, contact tracing. And don't tell me about injuries because everybody has injuries. It's like malfeasance. It, it's another instance of this staff and their inability to build and manage a roster when you have 105 spots at your disposal and you can't even have a practice. Better days ahead. You almost have to. Like, if the next guy can have a practice, they're better than they are right now. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.